Good afternoon, this is Mr. Schweitzer and this is a little video on specific heat and heat capacity. Now, to look at the idea of specific heat and heat capacity, um, there's, there are reasons why we care about specific heat and those reasons will somewhat be um, talked about later, but just the idea of specific heat. Um, if we take an, uh, an item, let's just say we have a very small piece of iron and this iron let's say weighs 10 grams um, and then I take a bigger block of iron and let's just say this piece of iron is um, is 100 kilograms so very large piece of iron and I have a very small piece of iron and I start to heat these things. I start to, uh, uh, to add energy here. Um, start a, maybe start a flame right here. Okay, and energy starts radiating towards these guys. This thing here has got a small amount of mass, so it warms up relatively quickly. Uh, the temperature picks up fast. And this guy, it's got a lot of mass, so uh, its temperature just slowly reaches up here. And of course, uh, you might think, okay, well, after even a few moments, you might have a hard time touching this guy and this one here is um, just warming so they're both storing energy at a, a, you know as a certain way um, and we we might say this is like heat capacity um, or you might say this is a, a form of specific heat so in the end you heat this thing and let's just say hypothetically this guy raises to 1000 degrees um, and then let's say this guy here raises to only 25 degrees. All right, so um, in this case, uh, one of them, uh, it warmed up a lot, and one of them not so much. But uh, you might note that maybe it took uh, more energy even to raise this guy to 25, depending on where it started, as opposed to this one. So we could do ourselves a little thought experiment. Let's say we take a block of ice, and we take... Um, our small block and we set it on here like this and this thing is 1000 degrees so keep in mind that um, uh, we probably need to you know some sort of tongs to pick that up because it's very very hot and then we have our very large block of uh, of iron here of course it's 25 degrees so we could easily just pick this thing up um, but turns out after a little bit of time that the large block, even though it was not nearly as uh, hot, melts more water. So this guy melts more ice. All right, so energy was transferring out of this thing. Uh, so turns out that energy, more energy transferred from the big block to the small block, even though the big block was cooler. All right, so the formula, or what we quite often describe as being energy, we say is Q. And the Q is equal to the mass of the item times the change in temperature of the item times the specific heat of the item. So this is our first look at the mathematics of this. And the mass usually is in grams. This is in temperature final minus temperature initial. And this is equal to... Um, the amount of energy needed to raise one gram of the substance one degree Celsius. So you might recollect from a previous video that uh, one calorie is equal to that same value for water. So the specific heat of water, if we're dealing in terms of calories, is 1. If we're dealing with water in joules, well then it would be 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius. So it takes 4.1 joules of energy to raise 1 gram of water 1 degree Celsius. Alright, so either way, that's for water. But for iron, just so you know, iron Fe, depending on its form, is about... Um, Point uh, four ish um, degree uh, joules per.
per gram degree Celsius. So either way, that's inconsequential right now. But uh, so either way, it looks like um, that in order to raise this thing up from an original temperature, it had up to the 25 um, was a, a lot more energy than it was required to raise it up to the 1,000 because it had such small mass. All right, so let's do another little thought experiment, okay? We have the very hot block and the not so hot block. Take the hot block, uh, sorry, the, uh, the cool the big block, and it's 25 degrees Celsius, and we know it contains more energy. It can, it can actually melt more ice. And we take this small block and we set the small block on top of the big block. And you'll note that, okay, well, what happens? Which block gets hotter? This one's 25 degrees Celsius. This one is 1,000 degrees Celsius. Okay, and, and of course, since I've just talked about this, I'm leading you down a path that says, well, maybe since the big block's got more energy, it can melt more ice, then in fact, it will once again give the small block more energy and you'll have energy flow in this direction unfortunately well not fortunately unfortunately that's just not the way it works energy moves not by quantity of energy but by difference of temperature so even though the big block contains more energy it will actually um, transfer it it will it will receive energy from the small block I'm going to redraw this a little here. We have our small block here. Because it has a higher temperature, energy flows not by total energy, but by temperature. So in this case, the block will get slightly warmer, and, the, and then the small block will get, will get cooler, and they'll reach some sort of equal temperature. Um, and that really is what specific heat is all about. Specific heat is your relationship between your change in energy and your change in temperature. Obviously mass has something to do with that. Q equals mass times change in temperature times specific heat. So um, that's what this guy is here. Larger specific heats take more energy to raise it to degree Celsius. Um, and we'll do all sorts of mathematics with this. Of course, you also could say something that's just straight heat capacity. Now, heat capacity, if you look at it, it's um, if someone says heat capacity is in kilojoules, let's say, per degree Celsius. Mass is not in this particular guy. And the reason why is because it usually would be involved in something where the mass is static. Um, and you could say, okay, purely the mass is not changing, it's never going to change. Heat capacity is very spe specific to an item, and you would say, okay, well, if this thing ends up being having heat capacity, let's say X kilojoules per degree Celsius, and I were to raise this thing, let's say 2 degrees Celsius, then I would say, okay, well, uh, all I do is take my 2 degrees Celsius times degrees Celsius per kilojoule X multiply across uh, and answer would be 2x and that would be in kilojoules. So I require 2x kilojoules of energy to raise this guy 2 degrees Celsius. It's simply a relationship between energy and the amount of energy takes to raise 1 degree Celsius. Um, and this is going to be what we call specific heat. Uh, it's, it's the amount of energy and, and you might think that uh, it takes the same amount of energy to raise everything up. I could have a block of wood. I could have a block of iron. I could have a block of copper. And you might even make them similar in size. Uh, you wouldn't be able to make them all the same, either the same size and the same volume because they have different densities. Um, but you have made them the same mass aluminum adding energy to these guys based on the specific heat they will raise in temperature differently they all will consume the same amount of energy yet they all have different changes in temperature and that's governed by this formula right here thank you very much